Hey everyone, I'm standing in front of my sewing space, which is also a part of our living room. And I've done some updates recently that I, I want to share with you because I think it was about two years ago since I last made a tour of my sewing space. So quite a lot has happened, including some new but used furniture that I think has really lifted this space. And of course, I will talk about how I store things and of course the struggles that I have. It's just a journey, right, to just keep all the things in place. But I'm going to show you guys that and well, let's take the tour. So here is my sewing table. It stores three different machines. My sewing machine, which is a Bellina 1230. It's a vintage one. My serger, which is a baby lock, imagine. It's a really good serger. And last, I also have a Genome 2000 CPX cover stitch machine. Another investment I'm very, very happy about is this one. It's a magnifying lamp. And to be honest, this has been such a game changer, especially when you get a little bit older. The sight is not top notch. Uh, having these in front of the sewing machine makes everything so much easier. It makes sewing straight easier. All those intricate stuff, especially when you're working on darker fabrics. Um, this one is from Prim. I don't think it's available anymore, but several of you guys have uh, tipped me on another lamp that's probably even better than this one. So link will be, of course, to that lamp in the description section because, to be honest, the next investment in your life should probably be this one, if you haven't already. And one of my proudest things in this sewing space is my IKEA hack cutting table. It consists of shelves from IKEA. Uh, they used to be called Expedito Calacta. I can't remember because they switched names. So this is quite a popular construction and you will find many tutorials online and I've also done a blog post about it myself. Uh, there are lots of different variations but the basic goal is that you first place a piece of board then you attach the shelves and on top of that you place a piece of hardwood like this and if you're like me and want to cut fabrics, you chop that off with a cutting mat. And I also put mine on wheels, which gives it so much flexibility. Because as I have such a small sewing space, for me to get access when I'm cutting it, it means the world to me to be able to move all this around. So if you have the inkling and are a little bit of a do-it-yourself or, or <laughs> know someone who is, then I would definitely recommend that you check this out because it saves so much space. To be honest, I have so many things here. I store my pattern, my sewing books, lots of my sewing tools, uh, tissue paper, um, scraps that I use when I'm doing samples. I have stories for projects that I'm currently working on, uh, my pattern magazines, sewing books. Did I say that? Yeah, I think I said sewing books. <laughs> I have so many things. So I have this large, singular cutting board now that I love, love, love. I used to have four small amounts that I pieced together, but a couple of years ago, I decided to invest in one full size. Now, I have one thing that I'd love to get your suggestions on, because what I discovered after a while is that it stopped lying flat, so there are actually a wobbly situation on one side of it. It started with one wobbly, um, so I thought when I was uh, away uh, this summer, I placed a couple of heavy books on that spot so I thought maybe, ah, oh, that could flatten out. Uh, when I got home, what has happened was that the wobbly area had moved to another space and it was also <laughs> left as the original space. So instead of having one bigger wobble, wobble, wobbler, whatever you say, now I have two <laughs> two wobbly areas and I have no idea how to solve it or what causes cause it. So if you have any tips on how to get the mat to lie flat, I'd love to know because it definitely um, makes cutting harder because you can't really cut uh, at this wobbly area. So I don't know if I should try more books or heat or steam or, you know, any suggestions. I would love to know. Now, I have bought many sewing tools lately, but I got this one from my dad, which is an old pair of tailor's shear. And I would love to know if you have any experience in uh, leaving these to... Um, a scissor sharpener, if that's something that works, if it is worth paying the money to even try. It's such a beautiful tool, so I can I can just keep it because it, it makes me feel happy. But if I can use it actually as a functional tool, then I'd love to do that. So if you have an experience in giving new life to an old pair of scissors, please share in the comment section 
uh, on tips on how to go about this. And as you might have already noticed, I have these red stickers on pretty much everything. And these are labels. I use the traditional old school Dymo label maker. And this one makes it so much easier for me to keep track of everything. So I have labels for bias tape. I have labels for the box that stores my zippers. I have labels for these, the ones that stores my um, thread. My overlock thread, I have labels for the wool and nylon storage. So I that means I don't have to think uh, every time I need to put something back. And this simple, simple method saves me so much time. And I know some people are like born organizer. Some people love watching um, stuff like Marie Kondo. To me, it gives me um, anxiety and um, a feeling of uh, being less than. So I, I need something that is... Um, very intuitive and a no-brainer for someone who, who sometimes struggles with keeping order. Uh, so these labels have been an absolute lifesaver for me. And I just bought a new unit the other day, but then I ran out of red, red labels for my, to my Dymo. So I'm going to uh, buy more of that. So I can going to mark all these shelves as well. <laughs> and speaking of organizing, I also yesterday spent a good chunk of the day it felt like to organize all my elastic because I clearly have an elastic shopping problem. Uh, so I rolled them into uh, car carton or well pad pieces. Uh, so now they're nice and neatly organized and I hope that this will also work. I'm not as optimistic about this solution as I am with the um, label system, but at least I can sometimes get myself a little bit motivated to sort things out. I, I don't mind that too much. It's just that it stresses me out uh, to do it in the moment, to always put everything in a nice order because I just want to sew. I don't want to be bothered too much <laughs> organizing my stuff. So that, that's again, uh, one of the ways I've managed to keep all this stuff in control uh, despite being not a naturally organized person. Also, a couple of weeks ago, I invested in a new desk. I've had my last table for about 20 years and it was starting to get really worn down. But more importantly, because I also work from home currently and do lots of computer works and my shoulders and my back can't really take sitting down when I'm working in front of the computer. So I was really in a need of having a standing desk and standing desk, you can buy these in a, at Ikea and other places, but uh, two things. First of all, they're quite expensive. And secondly, I didn't feel too good about, uh, you know, uh, investing in new furniture. I tried to, as much as I can, you know, reuse furniture, buy second hand. I mean, furniture fees, uh, buying new furniture is works. Uh, when you have something that works, you feel kind of wasteful. So I felt, felt a bit bad about that, to be honest. Um, so I started looking into getting used office material. And office materials is actually a good way of um, looking into this stuff because they're usually much better quality than the, the stuff you can buy that is more geared towards the general public, so to speak. And secondly, there's also the fact that they can be very expensive if you buy them new, but if you can get them used, you will usually get them for less than half the price. So the quality is amazing, to be honest. They look almost new. I think the table looks super fresh and the legs are in a pretty good condition as well. And when you're short like me, it's also really hard to find a well-fitting office chair because they tend to be very high up here. And also the, the width is usually too wide. If you have small shoulders like me, the armrest will end up here and that's really not very relaxing for your shoulders. So, but at the same office place that I found the table, I was actually, after lots and lots of searching, uh, was able to find a chair as well. It looks like it's made for children, but then again, I'm not much higher than <laughs> an average child. So for me, uh, this was definitely a no brainer uh, to get this chair. And both these things, they definitely, weren't super cheap because um, they are used office materials, as I said. But if I compare that to the fact that this is all used stuff and it's not new, so I don't feel as bad about buying it. Uh, and also know that this is something that will last many decades to come, which is also really from a sustainability point of view, it's also super important for me. Another investment that I'm really happy that I did was that um, about a year ago, I invested in the Score this uh, pegboard system from IKEA. Now, this is like um, a version of you know the traditional pegboard where you have those round pegs. This one is like um, 
a complete system where you have this specially designed hooks and shelves. And the great thing about this system is that it has so many different storage units. So while I was definitely um, considering doing uh, using the, going the traditional do-it-yourself pegboard route, to be honest, I am happy that I did not because I think that this one offers me so many more options. Yeah, it's a little bit more expensive, but in my opinion, unless you're very uh, good at you know hacking other type of um, storage unit hooks, I think this one is a bit easier. And by the way, if you're really curious about how to set it up, my thoughts about it versus a regular pegboard, you can also check out a video that I've done about my purchase of this and how I installed it, if you're curious to know more about that. Of course, link to that one will be in the description section as well. So I hope this video can also be a little bit of inspiration to you if you are like me and am not able to have a dedicated room to, for sewing. And if you're living in, in smaller quarters, that can be a struggle, but if you are able to give up a part of another room, such as your bedroom or your living room, then it's actually, I would say, can be possible to to get a decent working space, even though you are tight for space, so to speak. So it's definitely, it requires a lot of uh, figuring out. Uh, I also have to clean quite uh, regularly, both clean the space as, as it gets a little dust and lint, and also to make sure that my sewing notion doesn't get out of hand because there is really no room to grow, as you <laughs> noticed when I showed you guys around this, uh, my sewing space that, you know, it's absolutely cramped. Uh, so there's not really much room for to make any additions. I could probably add some wall space, I think, but that's pretty much it. And uh, also, as I'm also having my space in the living room, I also want to make that it's a, it's a nice room for everyone to be in uh, and not just like a messy sewing space. So that also, of course, you know, makes... I have to do some other consideration perhaps than one would do if one had a dedicated sewing space. And if you want to know the evolution of my sewing spaces. This is actually the fourth video I've done since I started my YouTube channel almost four years ago that you can check out and see the progression of my sewing spaces. And I can also give you an inspiration and see that, you know, it's not like you figure out everything <laughs> from the start. It's a journey for sure. And it's not always a uh, pristine. Uh, I definitely show you some of the messes as well in some of the other videos. Uh, so I really hope you enjoyed that and thank you so much for watching and please hit subscribe for weekly sewing videos. Until next time, bye bye!